Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome to Creative Ends platform. On this channel, I teach people how to make headwears ranging from turban to fascinators to auto gilly and everything that just has to do with the head. So the piece you are seeing on this video is what I will be talking about today. If you are interested, please sit back and watch every detail of what I will be showing you here today. The cap I used is called body pleated turban and then I'll show you how to make the designs. All right, so starting with how to make the design, I'll show you how to fold it. E I G H T. Eight. I'll show you how to fold it. So that's what I am doing now. And I'm doing it slowly for you to understand how to fold it. Because the old design that I will be using has to do with how I turn my hands to create the bow. And for me to create the bow, I actually created eight, the number eight. So you can see how I am folding it. You can see the fold, just wash my hands. This is how we turn it to create eight. If you don't turn it right, you will not get it. So let's see it again. Here is the... Uh, what I'm using to create the bow, Krilone. So when I cross it to the back, I'll hold it at that point. I'll arrange it and make sure that it is standing and facing the direction I want. Then I'll take the second part, I'll smoothen it, then I'll turn it to the other side. So when you look at how I turn this now, you see the turning to the other side, yes, and then I'll place it on top of where the one I'm already holding before. So at that point, both of the edges will meet at that point. Then I'll hold it together, and from that point now, I can use my needle and thread to secure it. Is that okay? so all right so let's just face the tutorial proper this is the body pleated turban i am not making tutorials on it i have tutorials on it on my channel already so i'm not doing that the cap is ready so to create the bow what i did was to use this material they call yori yori material I know those in Nigeria will know the material. It is called Yori Yori material. It's a kind of reflective uh, fabric and a little bit stretchy. But it has this shining effect on it. And then I will be combining this Yori Yori material with Krilone. The Krilone I am using is the 6 inches Krilone. But I will fold it to become very, very tiny. So that it can pass through that yori yori material by the way the length of the material i used to create the uh material uh, the yori yori material i'm going to fix this acryl on it to the size is width the width which is the wideness is just about two and a half inches so by the time i take it to my sewing machine and fold it i will just be having like one inch on a fold you understand one inch on a fold so that's why it's very tiny all right so right now i prepared a lot of this particular uh, uh, uh what do i call it acrylone inside the material so, so i prepare a lot of it and my intention is to use it to create so many uh bows for me to do that i'll be folding it like eight what i just showed you now the only thing again is that i'll continue without cutting i'll just keep putting it creating the design 
and watching how it is going to see if I am satisfied with what I am getting or not. So what I'll be doing now is I'll be using the, my needle and thread to secure the fold that I have created. I'll use the needle and thread at every point that I finish using folding one, I will be tacking it just to keep the fold in position. And also it will help me to see how the design is progressing. So that's the reason I am sewing. You cannot just fold everything before sewing, but you keep sewing as you fold. So this particular first one that I have folded is going to be the base or the foundation on which I will be folding or adding every other one until I finish creating this turban. I'm calling it one million bow turban. I'm calling it one million bow turban, as in like bow tie, one million bow turban. Though what I'm folding is not up to one million bow, you understand, just to tell you that it is you use as many uh, bows as possible. So I call it one million bow turban. Sometimes when I create the bow, it will even be more than what you are seeing now. I just get it so busy with a lot of bow. And then when I like, I also use stones to embellish all the bow. So you see the bow and the reflection on the bow so much that it becomes like a center of attraction. Do you understand? So I call it one million bow turban. So I've told you that the first one I created happens to be the foundation for my design. So I'll just keep adding on top of that one to see what becomes of whatever I am creating. Now, one thing I will say to you, my viewers, is that no matter how far you've gone with your design, if you find out that you are not satisfied with it, please don't feel too tired or too lazy to lose what you have done. To lose it is not hard. It's just for you to cut the thread that you have used to secure it and then change your pattern. You understand? The bottom line is that you should get something that is very good. So as you watch, you just see how I keep uh, adding and creating the bow. What is very necessary here is the ability for you to create the bow as in fix the material, the creloni and the material. And one thing, if you are a very good observer, you will observe that the bow is strong. It's very strong and it's not going to fall from any position you put it. It's not going to fall. Why? I told you I used 6 inches crillone and I forced it into 1 inch. Do you understand? So you can see that it's standing like you use um, there's this uh, uh, material. It's not material. There's this accessory we use for art that they call bone. It looks like it is bone that I use but the simple truth is I actually worked with Kriloni. I did not use bone. But because I force that large quantity of Kriloni into a very small state, it makes it to stand. And nothing will fall it the way it is now. Nothing is going to fall it. It's not going to lose shape. Even when they wash this turban, it will remain the same. I'm telling you the truth. So just finish watching the video and thank me later at least just go to the comment uh, session and say i thank you uh -uh, it will not do you anything please all right so this part i am putting at the middle is meant to cover all the sewing all the rough work there i remember that i created this very first one at the beginning 
before I started my explanation. So right now, I want you to look at the top band on the dummy's head before I start adding the feathers. If you look at it now, well, to some people, they will say it is final. But to me, the style looks like it, it is uh, sleeping in my eyes. It's not, it's not, it's not loud enough. It's not, it's not yet uh, that super attractive. Look at it. It's just too plain, just too, I don't know. To me, it's not yet speaking the language I want it to speak. So I want it to speak that language of look at me. Can you see me? So because of that, I started putting in some bit of feathers to create this uh, look that you are seeing now. You can see that now it looks better than uh, when it was without the feathers. And then to round it up, I just add a little bit of this embellishment. I actually wanted to use gold, but I wasn't having gold. I said, well, silver is not bad. So I used silver, right? One other thing I do to some design is that I can add a um, stone to the body of the bow. I just drop some reflective stones on it. So it makes it to really, that particular part to really be loud and uh, a center of attraction. So if you like, you can add stones to your own. But I did not add stones in this video. So if you are making yours, you can add stones if you like. Is that okay?